Hello, welcome to this next uh, look at Substance Painter. Um, Substance has a new baking tool uh, which gives us a few options, makes it a bit more clear, I think. Um, and I'm just in ZBrush because uh, I'm going to show you what we're going to do. So I've done a quick silly sculpt, um, you know, nothing very serious, just want something with lots of detail. And I've exported it at this high detail level by having my highest subdivision selected and then exported it to a directory. As you can see, this one's like uh, 200 meg. Um, is that meg? 2000 meg? 2000 meg. Um, oh, I've lost count. <laughs> and uh, I've got my low one here, um, which I've exported at its lowest resolution. And that's, let's have a look, uh, 759K. So big difference. You know but we want to preserve the detail okay so what do we want well, we want substance painter uh, let's get substance up and there we go so i want to first file and then new and set my resolution and select my low poly model uh, everything else is fine i don't need uv tiles workflow and i don't want to auto unwrap it going to click OK and here it comes in it's just a lump you know it's nothing very exciting um, it is the low poly mesh um, so what we want to do is now go into the new baking area and that's up here uh, where we had previously just had our little camera our paintbrush uh, we now have a croissant uh, cleverly put in there to represent baking and when we click on that we come into this area so we have all our baking options over here that's very nice uh, we have some uh, visualization things uh, but the first thing i want to do is uh, under here i want to select this little dialogue and then pick in my high resolution mesh and you'll see that comes in and now it's projecting uh, a shell around the outside it's this kind of uh, brownish uh, kind of invisible shell and we can see there are some blue areas and there are some red areas and the red areas are poking through the shell the shell represents how far um, substance painter will project a ray before it stops looking so anything in red it will ignore so red will be errors so what we need to do for that is just extend our frontal distance here so if i grab that and just expand it out and until i think it's about right i'm going to have a look around check the other parts of the model make sure i've got no red now i don't want it to go too far um just enough essentially so if i draw that back a little bit oh we've got a tiny little bit of red there look so there we go whoops that might have been a bit too much so I'm just going to have a look around make sure I've got no red showing now this sort of projection you know front and back is going to help us bake our um, normal map it's going to help get the detail all the lovely detail from that high res mesh and create a normal map which is going to apply to our low res mesh to bring back that detail so i need to set my resolution i'm going to go 2048 and uh, i think i'll probably turn most of these no i'll leave them on just for fun and then click bake and now it's going to go through the bake process so it's projecting from the low to the high calculating the difference and then creating a map to accommodate for it and that was quite quick that's finished uh, so i'll return to painting mode and now we can see we've got our detail from our high res map or high res model which has been projected onto our uh, lower res model i wouldn't say it's low res but it's lower so that's the uh, basic process let's see if we have a look at some of the maps uh, so here's our normal map now it's important to know that the the normal map won't change the underlying geometry it's just surface detail um, 
So when the render engine hits that model, yeah, the normal map um, decides how light will react. So without changing the model itself, uh, the surface will give the illusion uh, that there is depth and detail and so on. What else have we got? Uh, our lovely ambient occlusion map, that's nice. You'll see that, you know, in crevices, you know, we've got our uh, lovely dark areas and we've got curvature and what else we got? Thickness, there we go. Okay, so that's the basic bake process. In the next bit, um, I mean, if you just wanted to know that, there you go. In the next bit, I'm just gonna build a, a small um, material set, which will, um, you know, make it look nice. So I'll talk to you then. Okay then, so we'll build the maps now. So what I'm gonna do is just delete this one out. I don't want that. And I'm gonna start off with uh, some a little bit rocky, I guess. Uh, perhaps this concrete bear. So let's drag and drop that over there. So that gives us a rock and it's not all that exciting. Um, so we're going to add some detail with using some of those bake maps. This is the why the bake maps are so important. Um, you know, they are the underlying power of substance. You know, without them, you know, it's a whole different, you know, a whole different game. Uh, so first of all, I just want to get into these cavities and such like. So I'm going to right click and duplicate this layer and then down in the luminosity, I'm going to drop it down so it's darker. And then we'll add a black mask and then right click and add a generator. So the generator will basically use those maps and, you know, give us effects. So what I'm going to use here is ambient occlusion. And when I do that, you'll see a lot of it goes dark, some of it's light. It's kind of the wrong way around for me. To help visualize that, I go to the mask, view, and where it's white, it's gonna shine through. Where it's dark, it's not. Uh, so this is entirely wrong. I want it to be mostly dark and, you know, uh, light in the crevices and cavities. So I'm gonna click the global invert, and that gives me that. And now we can increase our blurs and balances. So I'm going to take that back so it's brighter. Maybe up the global contrast so that the you know I've got a little bit more, you know, in the way of very dark areas and very light areas. Uh, I don't want it to be grey because that's just like a 50-50 a mix. So if we go back to our material, now it looks a bit more defined. We can see here in this crater thing, we've got some darkness in our little cracks here. We've got some darkness and some darkness here, which is great. You know, that's all very well and good. Uh, but now I want to highlight some um, edges. So I'm going to copy this again, uh, right click and duplicate. I'll drag that above there and then we'll add a black mask. This time, uh, let's go back here. I'm going to increase the luminosity so it's lighter. I might overdo it to start with. And then add a generator. And this one, I want curvature. There we go. So everything looks very, very white now, which is not what we want. So to, to tune the mask, I'm going to go to the mask view so I can see what's going on. And underneath here, I'm going to open up curvature and have a look at my mode. So the mode is on edges. We've got edges, cavities, dual and unprocessed. So this is going to try and pick up the edges. And now let me just close that up and I can start to adjust. So take the blur off a bit. So now I've got some quite black bits and I've got some very bright bits. That gives me a good mix. If I want to make that even stronger, I can increase the global contrast. 
and when we go back to view it there we go now I've got some nice little highlighted worn edges on those you know uh, crevices uh, I could adjust this a bit I think it might be a bit bright it might not not sure so if I take it right down it's going to go really dark uh, but I just want it to be light enough there we go somewhere around there I think okay what else do we want to do well perhaps we want to add some greenery to it yeah why not uh, so I'm going to add another fill layer and I don't have a moss texture unfortunately uh, but I'm going to use this mortar wall just as a stand-in and then I'm going to change this out to uh, some sort of darkish green and then we'll add a black mask we'll add a, a generator to that and now I'm going to use curvature again but this time instead of using the cavity uh, the edges I'm going to use the cavities so if we open up curvature switch it from edges to cavities and switch over to my mask view to fine tune so we can see where it's white it's going to show up and we can adjust out blurs and contrasts to you know try and get it to where we want it it's a bit more contrast there we go so i've got some patches of green in some of the cavities uh, but you know not whole cavities not like we did before with the ambient occlusion where it was like a you know a bit more global this is a bit more focused and when we go back to our material you see I've got some little greeny bits in there and if it's too strong or too mild you can either adjust the um, the generator uh, or you could adjust the uh, the blend and uh, that's about it um, so the first bit's baking then it's building your uh, material and it's just to show that I, the you know the new baking tool is there um, and it's kind of helpful especially with the normal projection and um, you know without those maps without that bake um, I think you'd really struggle to get this result this quickly <laughs> well I hope that makes sense if you have any comments or questions please let me know um, in the comments and I will talk to you again soon